Hello, this is Dr. Mintz. I'd like to go over this case of a CT abdomen and pelvis on a patient about 53 years old who presented with epigastric pain, nausea, and vomiting. The preliminary lab results indicate an elevated lipase. Now, if we look through these axial images, I'll let you kind of peruse them and get a sense of what's going on, and it's in the upper abdomen. Okay. So just for review, here's the liver and the spleen, and if we go down a little more inferiorly, we see the pancreas. The pancreatic tail is always pointing close to the splenic hilum. So here is the pancreatic tail, the body of the pancreas, pancreatic neck, and the pancreatic head, and here is the uncinate process. This part of the pancreas wraps around this mesenteric vein, the superior mesenteric vein, and here you can see the splenic vein coming to join the superior mesenteric vein, and together they form the portal vein. And if you follow it, you will see that it courses through the porta hepatis, kind of the hilum of the liver, and gives rise to these large vessels in the liver, the portal veins left and right, and if you follow that backward then, you are looking at the portal vein. The pancreas then is pretty readily localized because it is very consistent in its relationship to the portal vein, of course. And posterior to the pancreas, we see, first of all, most prominently, the splenic vein coursing to the left. The splenic vein has the same destination, if you will, laterally, as the pancreas tail kind of does because they both are heading right toward the splenic hilum. So the prominent vessel posterior to the pancreas is the splenic vein. The splenic vein comes and joins the superior mesenteric vein and they converge to form the portal vein which enters the liver in the porta hepatis. So here's the pancreas. Do we see anything wrong with the pancreas? Well, the attenuation of the tissue there really looks pretty good. Right here you can see there's a little low attenuation round structure. That is the common bile duct. So the pancreas doesn't look too bad, but if you look closely you'll see that there is some stranding, some abnormality around the pancreas. So for example, right here so right here, you really should have some kind of anatomic structure that's soft tissue, or you'll have fat for the most part. But why there would be this intermediate gray level here that's not fat, and it's not pancreatic tissue or oral contrast, that doesn't look quite right. And even portions of the pancreas here look a little edematous. Well, if we look here, you'll see that the common bile duct distally is well visualized, but look closely at the pancreatic tissue. You'll see that the body and tail all are of a pretty uniform attenuation. The margins are pretty sharp, meaning the differentiation and the clarity of the margin between the border of the pancreas and the adjacent fat. The fat is nice and dark, that's the way fat should look, and the soft tissue is partially enhancing with the IV contrast. Well, here you have some stranding around the pancreatic head. Those little lines are areas of stranding. And the abnormality we see is also in the porta hepatis. So here where we have these vessels converging, including the hepatic artery, portal vein, all of this tissue here is abnormally Attenuating. In other words, it is not as dark and low in attenuation as it should be, but you have this grayness here, and that's all edema. So there's edema in the area of the porta hepatis, and the porta hepatis basically referring to what is the hepatic hilum, the hilum of the liver, they just don't call it that, and that's basically what this is. It's an area where there's a confluence of structures entering the liver, including the main portal vein, the hepatic artery, and the common bile duct. So here we have this edema, 
what's going on with that pancreas? Well, uh, as I say, the tissue here looks pretty good, but in this area we seem to have some edema stranding around the pancreatic head. In fact, here it kind of looks like part of the pancreatic head itself is edematous, right here. This is the common bile duct. So we have an edematous inflamed pancreatic head. We can see the common bile duct. What could cause that? Well, two major causes of pancreatitis. They are passage of a gallstone or alcoholic pancreatitis. Passage of a gallstone is actually more common. Do we have anything to suggest that might be what's going on here? And we'll follow this down inferiorly. Here's the gallbladder fossa, and the gallbladder is in it. It's not dilated. It doesn't really look dilated at all, but here we, we've got something in there. We've got, we've got gallstones in the gallbladder. And if you look, there's at least two. Is there a third there? No, may, no, I don't think so. There's two little gallstones. I don't see signs of calcification in this pancreas, which I would ordinarily expect to see in alcoholic pancreatitis, at least once it's become chronic. Plus, I don't really see the entire pancreas inflamed. Here it seems to be relatively localized. Again, this is the portal vein. This is the splenic vein. And this is the superior mesenteric artery, by the way. That's going to provide arterial flow to most of the small bowel and portions of the large bowel and the superior mesenteric vein and superior mesenteric artery branch pretty much in parallel one to another. So what could be causing this? I think that given that we have two stones in the gallbladder and we can see the common bile duct, it stands out a little bit. It's not terribly large, but it's, it stands out more than I ordinarily would expect it to. And here we're getting Oh, eight or nine millimeters, which is getting up to the upper limits of normal, especially at this age group. So, cutting to the chase, as they say, let's see what we can find. So I was going through this case and happened to notice something here in the right lower quadrant. See if you notice it. Okay, did you see it? There it is. What we have is a little stone. And notice that it is very similar in size and appearance to the little stones that we saw, the two little stones in the gallbladder here. So there's those two little stones there, and we have this one little stone here. Where is it? It's in the cecum. I can tell that because this looks like small bowel, and it's probably going to join, yep, sure enough, here, join the right colon at the ileocecal valve, and it's right in that area that we see this little calcification. Well, cutting to the chase, what I propose has happened is we have a patient with gallstones. One of those stones passed right into the common bile duct. That passed then along the common bile duct through the pancreatic head and probably got lodged there at some point, causing a backup of pressure and resultant pancreatitis, which initially affected more the area of the pancreas in close proximity to the common bile duct. And then it passed. So that isolated calcification that looks so much like the stones in the gallbladder, I believe represents the gallstone which was passed, which caused this pancreatitis. So we see pancreatitis pretty often, whether related to alcoholism or passage of a stone, but it's very rare to see all of these findings, a gallbladder containing a stone, a slightly prominent common bile duct, and then the stone itself, which has not yet passed out but with the stool, as it will eventually, and there it is sitting happily in the cecum. So an interesting case of gallstone pancreatitis.